We think about your PLCs this morning and we reflect on those a little bit. Tell me what you think went well and what you were really pleased with. I think what went well was making sure I knew what I wanted them to take away from the PLC, having a model and that way they know what I was expecting. I think that was beneficial for them to see and know um, what they needed to do and how to attack the data and then be, them being able to look at the data together and having that collaborative time and figuring out what their next steps need to be. Okay, and then speaking of the next steps, um, what I heard you say a minute ago, maybe on the planning side of it, um, what did you have to do ahead of time to kind of know uh, how to support them on their next steps? I had to know what, what their next steps could be. I had to know the possibilities so that I could coach them into where they could go for their next steps. So I did have to know that on the, on the front end. Okay. Um, all right, so I noticed that when you were working with first grade in particular, you had a knowledge of the digraphs and you had already picked out um, a spot in the ARG that would support them. Talk a little bit about what that support was and where you pointed them to exactly. Well, I wanted them to be able to go back and because the, the unit does not come back and assess whether kids got it or not. So I wanted them to be able to have knowledge of, do my students understand now um, what they were lacking or what showed up on this assessment. So I did point them in the direction in the ARG of, hey, where can we go for next step? Of course, they did get to the ARG and then we looked at what could they use to reassess and there was actually a progress monitoring piece in there. Okay, so when we think about the second and third grade in particular, I know that cluster's a little different because mm -hmm. third grade was looking at TCAP data, second grade was looking at their foundational skills data. So um, tell me how you utilized another person at the table today that it was in your meeting. Um, how did that person work um, with third grade? I mean, how does that work? Because you basically had two different things going on in this PLC. Mm -hmm. Well, and she kind of, after I had modeled my expectations for third grade to do, then she kind of worked side by side with him to coach him into his his data okay and tell can you name out who she Ms. is yes miss tina the assistant principal she okay so in this case it really helped to have an administrator here at the Absolutely. table with you that way we could kind of have two different things going at once okay all right so um one thing that i heard um as we looked at your agenda the plc you really asked the teachers to reflect at the beginning and what was going well and Mr. Alex had a really strong reflection about um, fluency practice with his kids. Um, could you share just briefly um, what he um, reflected on and the power of that? He reflected on having kids start chunking their reading and reading in phrases and not focusing so much on how fast they read, but using that phrasing, teaching them to use that phrasing and how that can in turn affect their comprehension. And that's where he's wanting to lead his students is more on reading well to comprehend and understand and not so much how many words they read per minute. And I heard him explicitly name out the training that he had received mm -hmm. this summer and putting some of that into yes. practice too. So it'll be exciting to see how that uh, transfers. And he already saw, said some on their Friday that he loves hearing the kids read because he's yes. seeing some change with expression, yeah. right? And they're also like grading each other and they're get, reflecting with each other as peers. So I think that's valuable too, so that kids have, you know, they don't have to be the best at it yet. Yeah. It's practice and, you know, that peer-to-peer -peer interaction I think is important too. Okay, and I love that you that you uh, recalled that because he did mention that they were using a rubric and he two. even named out that some of them were scoring each other twos yes. and threes, so they were being tough on each other. Well, yeah, so I so appreciate they're comfortable that. doing that. Right, you know? so right, that's so that's just powerful. The environment that he's already set up and the culture that okay. he's set up in his classroom. Okay. All right. So we've talked about what went well. So let me ask you, um, I, and I'm just approaching this kind of like we do a post conference. Mm -hmm. um, and I know this is just off the cuff. I didn't yeah. tell you this. So, yeah. but um, so if there was something that you would change after two PLCs, is there anything right now that you would think, oh, I might do this a little different um, from what you've done so far? Um, I guess maybe already. You know, sometimes you don't really know how teachers are gonna respond, but I think maybe going ahead and jotting down questions and already having them ready for how to guide them. Like having, you know, even though I was able to 
coach them with some questioning to guide them into what I wanted them to get from it, I still feel like I could have questions pre prepared that would be a better coaching, um, you know, to get them to be a little even more reflective. So. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is that you might think about some pre planned questions, mm -hmm. although you were able to guide them, but maybe jotting some down. So one of the things that I noticed is that when first grade started to work on their document, the Analyzing the Student Work mm -hmm. Protocol, they started having some great conversations, but nothing was really going down on the paper. Right. And so I heard you kind of redirect them and think about like pointing to the paper of like, well, this is, this is where you would write that down on this one. So is there anything that you think might have helped for them to understand that you really wanted them to go directly I, down I this. Maybe I should have been more explicit in my, my model okay. and had said, you know, as you are doing this, I really want you to use this guide to go through your own data. So maybe I didn't, you know, wasn't explicit enough as to what my, the outcome I wanted. Okay. Um, and you had an example with mm -hmm. you that you showed the teachers. Um, do you think if they had a physical example of that yeah. or if the example would have been in the materials that that yeah. could have been helpful? Yeah. So, Ms. Stacy, I had one other question about your PLC today. I noticed that in the PLC uh, during your norms time you referenced your parking lot. Um, and then I noticed in first and second grade they brought up something and you asked them to put it in the parking lot and then you addressed it at the end of the PLC. Would you talk to me just a little bit about that? Well, in one of the reflections, a teacher had brought up about the um, struggle of students with the noticing and wondering of the text. So I had asked her, since that wasn't on the agenda, to go ahead and put it in the parking lot, and that it was something we would get back to. And so we did touch on that at the end of the PLC before they left about making sure that they model the expectations for students when they are noticing and wondering with the text. Okay, so let's talk about the parking lot in general. Why do you think having that parking lot assist you in getting or accomplishing your goal for the PLC? Well, when you have a specific goal, it's easy for something to come up and obstacles or things that are on a teacher's mind that they want to get taken care of. But if you can put it in the parking lot, that kind of keeps your pacing on track and you can always touch on it at the end. Okay, thank you for sharing that.